in the years after my coma experience, which occurred in November 2008, I was deeply challenged by that mystery of why was it that the blinders came off when I was deep down, my neocortex was being destroyed. And that remains a mystery, but I've come a lot further along the pathway of trying to understand and use the power of that mystery. Part of that is about two years after my coma, I uh, was introduced to uh, concepts having to do with uh, the Monroe Institute, uh, the work of Robert Monroe, who wrote three wonderful books on his journeys. Uh, he was a pretty straight-laced guy who ended up having spontaneous out-of-body experiences. And he came to realize over more than four decades of very hard work uh, that you can use sound. And very specifically, you can use slight differences in frequency of sound presented to the two ears uh, to do uh, some very interesting things with consciousness. But I was attracted to it, as I said, two years after my coma or so, uh, when people approached me who knew a bit about hemispheric synchronization and brain entrainment, uh, what he called, what Monroe called hemisync, uh, and they suggested to me um, that maybe I could uh, revisit some of the uh, some of those realms that I experienced deep in coma when my neocortex was being ravaged by meningitis, but do it by in a reversible fashion by using these differential frequencies to the two ears. Uh, but the general idea is that there's a circuit in the lower brain stem in humans that's actually an ancient circuit. It's probably been there 200 million years, uh, probably came along in early vertebrate uh, evolution, uh, and according to many neurobiologists, uh, would kind of coincide with uh, the development of consciousness itself in, in the animal lineage. And uh, this particular circuit uh, is a very accurate timing circuit. And it's by presenting the slight differences in frequency to the two ears that this circuit, which can actually measure differences between the uh, two ears in terms of arrival and frequency, down to a few microseconds, that circuit is right next door to a circuit in the brainstem that modern neuroscience would tell you in our very primitive uh, kind of notions about consciousness, uh, that seems to be an ignition system for all of consciousness. Uh, when you think about it, uh, in evolution, we uh, long ago, um, hundreds of millions of years ago, had to start compartmentalizing various modules within the brain that did different tasks. And part of the challenge of consciousness was to tie all that together, to bind those events into kind of a sense of oneness. And in that process, you had to have a central timing circuit that would uh, unite all that. And in fact, that's what I believe is going on um, with these differential frequencies uh, that then seem to entrain consciousness. And the general idea, uh, again, going back to what had my, the central mystery of my coma with the neocortex being taken down, actually causing a great enhancement in awareness, my general idea was that with this kind of synchronization of electrical activity of the hemispheres using differential sound inputs to the two ears, that I might uh, basically synchronize the electrical activity that would have the overall effect of taking away the information processing of the neocortex and allow my consciousness once again to be set free, just like it was when meningitis was destroying my neocortex. In a nutshell, that is the work that uh, I now do um, in conjunction with sacred acoustics. Uh, sacred acoustics is basically uh, Karen Newell, Kevin Cossey. Uh, those who are interested should go visit sacredacoustics.com. But it has to do with uh, a very sophisticated use of patterning of these uh, sound inputs to the two ears to enable consciousness to be set free. And I believe that is what is happening, although uh, a deeper understanding of it is something that we're hot on the path of trying to understand uh, at this time.